Hi everybody, this is Dr. John Hayes and welcome to another edition of Beating Neuropathy TV. What we're going to do today is to talk a little bit about something that's unfortunately very common and that's what's called autonomic neuropathy. Autonomic neuropathy really isn't a disease, rather it's a group of symptoms. And these symptoms occur together in conditions that involve peripheral neuropathy. Some of these conditions of course are things like diabetes, heart disease, Autonomic neuropathy also occurs in conditions like multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, and so on. I like to call the autonomic nervous system the automatic nervous system. And the reason I say that is the autonomic nervous system is that portion that controls all the things that we never have to think about. And these things include how we digest our food, how fast our heart rate is, what our blood pressure is and what causes our blood pressure to change. Some of the other things that the autonomic nervous system controls is our body temperature by regulating the diameter of our blood vessels, how we sweat, and so on. When someone suffers from autonomic neuropathy, very commonly the symptoms they experience will be related to one of these systems. For example, if you have autonomic neuropathy that afflicts the heart, very commonly you will have an arrhythmia or perhaps known as palpitations or an irregular heartbeat. Sometimes it can lead to more serious cardiac conditions. Now there are some th simple things you can do to help your doctor diagnose autonomic neuropathy. One of these is what's called the sit-stand blood pressure test. In this simple test what you will do is to place a blood pressure cuff on your arm Remain relaxed and seated. Take your blood pressure and then immediately stand. Upon standing, your blood pressure should raise both the bottom number and the top number by about 10 points. If your blood pressure fails to rise properly or if it drops or if you experience sensations such as lightheadedness or dizziness, this could indicate autonomic neuropathy. It is very important to understand that the successful treatment of autonomic neuropathy depends upon early diagnosis and treatment of the underlying disorder. It's very important that you let all your healthcare providers know exactly what you're experiencing. Don't ever blow anything off. Pay attention to your body and what it's telling you. Even though medically it is very difficult to control, we do find patients that grab the bull by the horn, so to speak, and take charge of their own lifestyle, quit smoking, get more exercise, engage in physical therapy and appropriate treatment have a far better outcome. Indeed, even doing things such as giving up foods that are high in sugar, high in fats, and calories can make an enormous difference in how you feel in the progression or maybe even resolution of your autonomic neuropathy. If you have specific questions about autonomic neuropathy and some of the solutions that may now be available, I invite you to join us on Facebook. You can go to facebook.com forward slash beating neuropathy and post your questions and comments there. If you're interested in a very technical discussion of autonomic neuropathy, you'll find lots more at the National Library of Medicine. You can view their resources online at pubmed.com. You can learn much more about autonomic neuropathy by going to our website, neuropathydr.com. Thank you for watching this episode of Beating Neuropathy TV, and we'll see you here next time.